And there's one. We're going to join a field of the globe's best triathletes from Avignon, France. This is a tough competition. 600 athletes from 40 countries taking part in the first World Triathlon Championships. And your Sports Weekend host this afternoon is Ron McLean. We've come to the south of France to witness one of sports' truly complete tests. It's the World Triathlon Championships from Avignon, nestled in the Rhone Valley where the wines are full-bodied and so are the athletes. Today, the world's top triathletes will swim 1.75 kilometers, then move to the cycling course where they'll cover a distance of 40 kilometers and finish with a 10K run to the wire. Here in France, they're just getting over American Greg LeMond's startling upset of Laurent Fignot in the final stages of the Tour de France. Now their focus may once again be thrust upon the stars and stripes. The race favorite here today is Mark Allen of California, whom you see here in the cycle transition area getting set for the competition. Allen heads a powerful U.S. contingent, which includes Mike Pig of Arcata, California, who edged his countrymen at last year's world meet in Kelowna, B.C. The two are constant antagonists in the battle for individual acclaim, and here you see them conversing, but together they give the Americans a terrific one-two punch in the team competition. Mark Allen had this to say about his chances here today. I feel pretty good. I trained specifically for this race. Yeah. I've cut my miles back and done more speed work because it's a sprint distance triathlon. It's going to be a really hard race to win, though. There's uh -huh. all the Americans, the Europeans, the Australians. It's going to be the toughest race this year, whoever wins it. It is possible in this distance to have an athlete who isn't very famous, who maybe only a few people know about, mm. to come and to win this event. It's short, it's fast, and if for some reason the top guys are a little bit off that day, if maybe they're not as aggressive as they need to from the start, somebody could get in the lead, let's say a good swimmer, mm -hmm and we may never see him again until we cross the finish line. So it is definitely possible in this event. In the longer races, no, but in this one, yes. Mark Allen of the U.S. considered the one to beat entering this year's World Triathlon Championship. There are a lot of stories set to unfold and a lot of details specific to the sport to discuss, and for that, we're delighted to have as our analyst, race announcer Steve King, who's been associated with triathlon for several years, and a good beginning might be uh, the scene we have here, Steve. What we're seeing here is the races, the triathletes have had to be bussed down to the start area because it's a straight direct swim down the road to the transition area. However, well, I want to point out that the French organizers have decided that because of there's a usual favoring current in the Rhone and that's somewhat excessive, they've lengthened the course and it's now closer to two kilometers. But what we're seeing now is that the current is almost non-existent and in fact the swimmers are going to be facing a headwind. So I do expect the times to be a little slower than we anticipated. The Olympic distance would be 1.5 kilometers, and that may hurt the chances of some of the competitors. What about them? Uh, where do they come from? Well, they're representing 40 different countries. There are 530 triathletes in the field today. They will be going off in separate waves, though. It'll be the men representing their countries going off in the first waves, followed by the ladies, and then the age groupers. Let's discuss uh, the teams, and, and specifically Canada. What are our chances here? Steve? Chances are very good when it comes to the women. For the men, I would think we could place in the top five. Certainly, I would hope for a top five placing, possibly second or third if all goes very well. But the top teams, the Americans, of course, and the Australians. Now we are set for the start, and this first wave, maybe you could explain how they'll commence. Well, they'll just be lifting what you see there, the start banner that's crossing the chest of the swimmers. That'll be raised and off they'll go. But they should form what you see, a spearhead of that uh, triathletes almost pretty quickly there. It's not a running start. The Le Mans start, as is often the case, it's, it's better this way. But uh, part of the reason for having wave starts is to separate the swimmers pretty quickly. Otherwise, they can get chopped around in there. It's almost like a full contact sport sometimes. Uh, particularly in events like the Ironman when you have 1,200 athletes going off together. 1.75 kilometers in the Rhone River. Are courses like this one familiar to many of these competitors? Well, most of the competitors are actually, especially where we come from and in the States, are used to lake swims or in the Pacific. So this is unusual for them. But in Europe, this is very common. The Roth uh, West German Ironman, for instance, is down a canal and back again. So the Europeans could do very well out there. But the man I can see out in front 
It appears to be Richard Wells, a New Zealander, and we can expect him to be up front because he certainly is one of the fastest swimmers around in the sport. I should mention that these pictures are courtesy of French television now. There's a men's and women's division in various classifications. Our understanding is the French will focus principally on the men's race uh, with the professionals, and as a result, we mightn't have the chance to see the Canadian women's team uh, from whom you have high expectations. You're right, it's Richard Wells in the lead, and Richard, uh, there's a Canadian angle in his story. There certainly is. Richard uh, comes to Canada virtually in the spring every year, or at least has done for the last couple of years, and competes out of Kelowna because his manager is, in fact, Jim Bates from Kelowna, who's the same manager of the Puntus twins who are now residing in Kelowna too. So we like to see him, and in fact, a couple of weeks prior to this, Richard competed in the Canadian trials, the second race, the second Canadian trials that was held at Locarno Beach in Vancouver, and he came out a winner in that one. In the cycling portion of the competition, drafting isn't allowed, but clearly we're seeing it in this uh, swimming competition. What about that? Yeah, there's nothing they, the officials can do about that. It, it is allowable, and uh, as it is in running, of course, but it's a sensible thing for the slower swimmers to try and hook on to the feet of the person in front of them. That way they get clear, clean water. It's just like being a water skier behind a powerboat. Who do you see as the strongest of the swimmers? Well, I see the man who's leading there now. He should be able to hold on. If this was a 1.5K swim, he could possibly do between 17 and 18 minutes. Be but because it's been extended, we're not sure just how far it is, maybe we can look at an extra seven to nine minutes added on to the times, and that's really going to affect some people. People like Kenny Glar, people like Mike Pig, maybe even Mark Allen, who is one of the pre-race favorites. You can see uh, when we do get a shot of the boats adjacent to the swimmers that they're not drifting down the river at will. The wind is a, a real strong headwind, and as a result, uh, the competitors aren't getting the advantage, as you suggest. Uh, this 1.75 will be virtually a 2K swim by the time all is said and done. Absolutely, and there's a bit of a chop out there, and you'll notice as and when Richard Wells gets out of the water, he's a very powerfully built man, and he's done a, a lot of uh, windsurfing, a lot of... Uh, regular water surfing and body surfing, very strong man and he, he rolls a lot more when there are waves and chop out there. But his aim, in fact, this year is also to make the New Zealand Commonwealth Games team on the 4x100 relay, so he is a very powerful swimmer. Games get underway in January of 1990 and of course CBC Television will have coverage of those games from Auckland. Simon Cassidy of British Columbia has joined the lead pack here in the river. And Simon Cast has had a wonderful year. He got on the Canadian team after a third place in the Calgary trials and then a second place in the Locarno Beach trials. Richard Wells, the Kiwi, still leading the way. Simon has moved into third spot, and there's a group of five Canadians in this field. And, of course, they will take the top three results in order to put together the team competition total. Richard Wells of New Zealand with the lead. We're roughly halfway through the swim portion of the world triathlon championship and we'll return to the Rhone River and Avignon, France with our coverage of this year's championship on CBC Sports Weekend. In a moment. The sun may be setting on the summer season, but that's even more reason to join CBC Sports as Canada's world champions travel the globe in leaps and bounds. On the ice and in high-flying international equestrian competition the world over. There's the excitement of the Canadian Football League and the road to the 89 Grey Cup. The award-winning Hockey Night in Canada, all the shots, the scores, and much more. You're inside for championship boxing, both amateur and professional. The world's best go head-to-head -head and toe-to-toe -to -toe on Sports Weekend. Championship curling, the top ranks get back to the ice, aiming at national and world titles. There's World Cup downhill skiing, the thrills and the excitement for both men and women. And then join us in Auckland, New Zealand, as Canadian athletes in 1990 return to the international stage. Fall and winter, with CBC Sports, it's the best of times. Welcome back to Avignon, France, and the World Triathlon Championship. Ron McLean and Steve King, and a look at the current race leaders, Richard Wells of New Zealand, Glenn Cook of Great Britain, and Canadian Simon Cassidy of British Columbia in third position. 
And I'm really pleased to see the British athlete and the Canadian doing so well. Glenn Cook, the Englishman there in second place. We saw him last year in Kelowna when he placed fourth overall. Very strong, but he had to come to San Diego in California there to really get to the top of the sport because that's where the focus of the sport started around 1974. They had a lot of fun events then, but now it's a real serious sport. There are over a million triathletes in the world, and it's very pleasing to note that there are 40 countries represented here. What we can see at this point is that there is a distinctive group out front with about 20 or 30 swimmers in a second pack. And I believe Mark Allen is in that second pack. He won't want to be too far back because of the extended swim. If these leaders get too much out front, they're not going to be able to make up that time. And another man who will be worried is Mike Pick because he has to get a big lead on the bike to be able to hold it on the run. Steve, to further illustrate that point, on average in such competitions, the swimmers go about four and a half kilometers an hour, and at present they are averaging about three kilometers per hour. So it's clearly well, a slow pace. Obviously, the headwind's taking its toll. What about the comparison between this sprint distance or short distance and the Ironman competitions? Well, it, it's strange. We use the term sprint distance just to differentiate between the ultra distances of the Ironman, but really when you think of the individual disciplines and the distances we're seeing today, the term sprint hardly applies, so it's only in comparison to the Ironman, but nearly every one of the athletes in the field today has in fact competed and completed an Ironman course. 1.75 k's in the Rhone is what this swimming portion is about, and you'll notice on different swimmers, different wetsuits. What about the degree of coverage? Well, the wetsuits, of course, were originally intended to keep the body temperature up because of hypothermia or the potential for hypothermia, and obviously safety is paramount in such an event. But then they developed a specific triathlon wetsuit. Some are with arms and some are without the extended arms, and that's just because some swimmers get more of a feel for the water than others with or without them. But uh, there is a thickness of three millimeters allowable in certain places and five millimeters in other places. They are coming up now to the completion of the swim portion and maybe you could discuss uh, what happens here and, and the actual transition for the leader Richard Wells and the group in behind. Well it's very important in this particular race because they have a long run up to the bikes and uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens whether some of them start ripping off their wetsuits as soon as they exit the ramp. One of the things I'm really pleased to see is the numbers of spectators that are out to watch this event. The French, of course, love their sports and particularly cycling, so I'm sure the cycling course is going to be just covered with spectators and uh, I'm really pleased to see the French have put so much out to organize this major event. Simon Cassidy has slipped back into ninth position now. Richard Wells, who trains in Kelowna, B.C., continues to lead the pack, and Mark Allen, we understand, has moved up now into 15th as he tries to get into the rear portion of that lead pack. Garrett McCarthy of the United States is among the strong swimmers, and Mike Pig, as you suggest, a, a veteran of this competition and a former world champ, is trailing now at this point, uh, lagging in and around 20th position. Others we should mention, of course, the very strong Australian team. They've got some dynamo athletes in there. Spot Anderson, very well known. I hope we get to see something of him out on the cycle and the run course. He's known as Spot, and uh, he has some zinc all over him. He's a very colorful character, which matches his face. And there's a young man in there, Miles Stewart, who's a real phenomenon, come on very strongly recently, has won 13 triathlons outright in the Australian triathlon season. But coming up to the ramp, it is Richard Wells of New Zealand, the race leader. And now, as you say, the Kiwi will have a fair run, and he's not the strongest runner in the field. His uh, probably preferred disciplines are the swim and cycling, and he has to now lead this back over to the bicycle transition area. He does, and what a group we've got. Coming out there also is Thomas Kochar, the Czech. Now, he came out in second or third place in last year's Ironman too, but he could not hold it for the bike and the run portion. Also in there, Nick Croft, the Australian I can see, as well as Pablo Restrepo from Colombia. Good to see the Colombians here today. Obviously, they'll be very strong also in the cycling portion. Garrett McCarthy, first from the US, going through also. Uh, he's a powerful biker, but he's running. Well, I'd be surprised to see him being able to hold on. Just to reiterate, these pictures are courtesy of French television. We know that Simon Cassidy has to be somewhere in this group of runners moving to the cycle area, but we're not getting a shot of the off-ramp right now. Richard Wells uh, now moving into the area of the cycles, and he and Garrett McCarthy are the first two to get to their cycles, and now you'll see them quickly doff those wetsuits and get into their cycling shoes, which are right in the clips themselves. And they'll be keeping their bathing trunks on till the finish. 
I want to mention the time though, we've been given the official split 26.38 for Richard Wells, which certainly indicates it's about eight to nine minutes slower than what would be over the regular Olympic distance. So Richard Wells going out onto the cycle portion. In fact, he's not first out. We've just seen Garrett McCarthy going through. So just a couple of seconds between the first and second men. Now this phase of the competition is 40 kilometers. And how much of a difference will this make in terms of the ultimate result, or is it in the 10K run, Steve, that you see the difference? It'll made? make a big difference here, I'm sure it will. Um, but I want to point out just how good Richard Wells is, because some people say he's not a good runner, but in fact, he can run 33 minutes for 10K, and cycling, he's a very powerful cyclist too. He is, in fact, the past world champion in sprint distance in Perth a couple of years ago, and two years ago also won the Nice World Championships. So the French, very accustomed to this man, they would like to see him up there, and especially they'd like to see Mark Allen, one of the French favourites. He won again in Nice this year, making it six wins. Do you see this as a rather convoluted transition area? It appears that many of the cyclists are having to seek directions, and, and as you say, there's a terrific turnout in terms of fan support. Well, when you've got 530 bikes in there, and uh, it's a tricky transition area, but it looks like they've really done a good job in organizing it. But you know what the French are like? They like to be up there. We saw in Nice a similar incident where the motorbikers were alongside the bikers and they had to ask them to move aside. Mike Pig was yelling, allez, allez, as he came out of there. But uh, I think it's going to be a superbly run course. We've been over the course earlier to see how they were taking care of safety, and I'm very pleased with the way things are being done. Garrett McCarthy of the United States and Richard Wells of New Zealand and those two really represent the powers at least in terms of area in this sport Australia New Zealand and the Americas have really come to the forefront in triathlons they certainly have but there's Mark, Mark Allen. Allen he's the favorite he's had some tremendous victories already this year he won the America's Paradise Triathlon in the US Virgin Islands went on to Australia and won the Gold Coast World Cup Triathlon We've also seen him winning in Nice again for the sixth time and the President's Triathlon in Texas. So he's really in top shape. And he's cycling right now with uh, just one shoe. Yes, that, he's a barefoot. That's right. They were already pre-locked in to the pedal system there. It's a locked pedal system. And uh, it just saves seconds because the transition area is in fact like the fourth discipline of a triathlon. Triathletes actually practice changing their clothing and getting off onto the next segment of the race. Mark Allen, the favorite here, he and Mike Pig were expected to duel, and there you get a terrific overhead shot of the leaders coming around uh, one of the beautiful scenic turns along the Rhone River, and it's McCarthy and Wells among the front runners. And we've heard that Mark Allen's time for the swim was 28-22, so that's about a minute 44 behind. That's quite a bit of distance to make up when you're behind a man like Richard Wells. Ted de la Course, of course, uh, the head of the course, and uh, this picture courtesy of French television, and what about the cycles, uh, the marshals alongside? What will they be doing? Well, their job is to watch out for any drafting infractions. What, what that means is a person cannot sit on the rear wheel of the person in front because otherwise uh, they don't have to work so hard. So they have to stay at least two to three bike lengths behind if they're going to stay directly behind or stay three to five feet either side. And there's also passing rules. They have to make a pass within 10 to 15 seconds if they're going to try. Mark Allen, 007, licensed to thrill. <laughs> We should talk about the technology of these bikes and perhaps uh, tie that in with the Tour de France recently completed. Uh, many of the innovations we see here uh, have shown up in the world of cycling, and we'll get to that in just a moment. At the moment, it's Richard Wells and Garrick McCarthy, one, two, as we continue now with the cycling phase of the World Triathlon Championships. And we'll be back after this. Championship, and Richard Wells of New Zealand continues to lead the way, followed closely by Garrick McCarthy of the United States. And you notice the bars that Richard is using there, most of the top triathletes around the world now use them. And we saw the Tour de France, where Le Monde also used them, and Andy Hampston of the US team. So a lot of innovation has been brought to the sport of cycling by triathletes. In fact, the bars were invented by a gentleman who called uh, Boone Lennon, who is a downhill skier and a cyclist. It was a Canadian, Andrew McNaughton, who in fact was the first triathlete to use them about four or five years ago. Nine kilometers into the 40K, cycling installment and you see McCarthy in second place followed by Nick Croft of Australia and Thomas Kochar of Czechoslovakia. Nick Croft is a very classy triathlete but I don't expect him to be hold, holding on to the others up there including this man Mark Allen. There's a reason he's called 
The grip and the Zen master, he has the ability to totally focus on the job at hand. Why don't you explain those monikers, uh, the grip, where did he get that? Well, because he's able to just totally concentrate on what he has to do. And many, many times you'll see he won't, won't look to the left or right to find out what's happening around him. And it, he just has a, a way of blowing past people. They can come up to him and it's like they're not there as far as he's concerned. He just doesn't focus on other people. He just knows what he's got to do. Does he intimidate his competitors? He certainly does. And that's why he gets a name like that. But Richard Wells can be pretty intimidating too. He's a very big man. In fact, he's focused a lot more on the sport this year. He used to be known for his ability to consume the odd brew or two, as are most Kiwis. However, he's going to be getting married shortly, and I think that's given him a different view on life. Well, he's leading the way now, and uh, he'd like to enter uh, two rings, one uh, connoting marriage, the other the winners. Philip Mathion of France, number 129, who seems to be moving rapidly. He certainly is. Look at the speed of this man. He's catching some of the top places there. He has a smaller front wheel and a disc wheel on the back. This uh, must remember, and it's Mark Allen that he's passing. I'm really surprised. Boy, he must be flying. These guys can do well over 40 kilometers an hour. And he has the small front wheel. What about it? Well, the closer you are to the ground, the faster you're going to go. But it does mean you've got to push a, a harder gear. But he, he obviously is a tremendous cyclist, so the French will be putting their hopes in this man. Do you see a lot of uh, the rabbit setting the pace uh, for a team in, in a competition where there are five or six athletes from one country? Would Philip Mathion be sent out to try and maybe advance the pace for the front runners and tire them? No, this is di uh, totally different from the Tour de France. The other man he's catching up there is the 18-year-old Miles Stewart, the Australian. But look at that man go. I'm really stunned at the speed he's showing. This is an individual race, don't forget. And there's the individual out front still leading the New Zealander, Richard Wells. And as you suggested, uh, this is thought of as a sprint by all of these athletes. So there's very little strategy other than ensuring that you don't get in a draft position and, and trying to rate yourself and, and preserve some of your energies and maintain water, which we'll see a lot of, of course, in the 10K run as we move toward the next leg of the event. We will indeed. It's a very hot day today and little wind out there on the bike course by all accounts, and that's the reason they're using the disc wheels. Any wind there is, the disc helps them cut through that wind. It really does cut down times. They've done all sorts of tests in wind tunnels and the like. The countryside is also relatively flat. In East Triathlon, we saw a lot of nooks and crannies and up and down. Uh, in this instance, the cyclists are able to move uh, pretty much at will in, in the same gear. There's a switch going on right now, but by and large, uh, they're able to set a pace and, and stay with it. Yes, it's an unusual course for the French. They like their technical courses and lots of downhills and uphills and very narrow streets, but this is great to see it's on almost a major highway. Some of the gear shifting, in fact, you'll notice Mark Allen's when you take a look at his bike system there. He has what they call a grip shift right on where he leans on those bars, and that means he doesn't have to go down to the down tube and change the levers there. Richard Wells, the Kiwi, continues to lead. He and Garrett McCarthy won two in this competition right now. Is it common to see an athlete go out to the lead and maintain that for the entire duration of the three segments? It certainly is when you're looking at someone like Mike Pig or Mark Allen. Yes, these guys can go out there. The swim, they can maybe come out three, five, ten seconds, something like that behind the leader, and they often do, but they can even make that time up in the transition area. It used to be that a few years ago you could be really good at two of the disciplines and not so good at the third, but now you have to be national level caliber in all three disciplines. Now you see McCarthy has gone to the lead once again, the American, Eric McCarthy leading the Kiwi Richard Wells. Well, if he wins this one or can stay right up there in the top five, it will be certainly the race of his life because he got in as a fourth place finisher in a race where two of the top guys had already qualified for the American team. So he was really delighted to make this American squad in the first official world championships being held here in Avignon. You see, he's wearing the cap, the NTTC. That's the National Triathlon Team camp. Uh, there are a number of professional American triathletes in that club, and uh, we've often seen them competing up in Canada, especially at the Ironman held in Penticton. So it's shaping up in the cycling portion of the World Triathlon Championship as a duel now between the Kiwi, who is once again going to assume the leader, it appears so, and indeed he does. Richard Wells goes to the front, followed by number 11, Garrett McCarthy of the United States, and Mike Pig and Mark Allen of the United States are beginning to move in to the lead pack. We'll be back with more of the World Triathlon Championship on CBC Sports Weekend in a moment.
All right, Ron McLean will return to triathlon, as you say, in just a minute. Also still to come this afternoon, the grace, beauty, and excitement of a tremendous figure skating show, the Jeep main event of figure skating featuring Ryan Orser and two-time Olympic champion Katarina Witt. That's from the Montreal Forum. That's still to come this afternoon right here on Sports Weekend. Updating Major League Baseball this afternoon. Blue Jays have now won five straight at home, 11-1 and one in the current homestand. Home runs by Kelly Gruber and Ernie Witt, both two-run homers, accounting for all runs this afternoon. Blue Jays now a game and a half in front of Baltimore. Baltimore will play in Chicago this evening. One other game in the American League, the Boston Red Sox uh, about to defeat Seattle in the ninth inning in Boston. And in the National League this afternoon, the San Francisco Giants are shutting out the New York Mets. Just a reminder, Montreal Expos play tonight against the Dodgers in Los Angeles. Let's check the U.S. Open tennis. Yvonne Lendl winning the number one men's seed. And on the women's side, the number three seed, Gabriela Sabatini, also winning this afternoon. Stay with us. Sports Weekend will continue right after this. It's beautiful. Is it fast? Very quick. As a matter of fact, I think I didn't know what to think. When Mulholland does four curves. While others describe luxury car performance with words like terminal velocity and lateral g-force, like it's on rails, owners of the Acura Legend Coupe tend to be a little less technical. It's a blast. We're at the World Triathlon Championships coming to you from Avignon, France. Ron McLean and Steve King. We've had the 1.75K swim in the Rhone River. Now the cyclists are touring in and around the countryside, a 40K course. And you can see the affable Kiwi leads the way over three Americans. And it's Richard's contention that all's well that ends well. And I'm really pleased to see Mike Pig has made up ground. He was voted triathlete of the year last year. He's had some wins already this year. He was there the first in Columbus, San Jose, and in Chicago. So now he'll be trying to open up a gap on Allen and see if he can get ahead of those two men that are out front. There's Mark Allen. Take a look at the bike he has there. It looks like it might be a little heavier than the normal, but it isn't, in fact. It's a composite frame, and it is aerodynamically shaped. The other man just coming into the picture, 115, that's Glenn Cook of Great Britain. We saw him do so well in the swim. He can hang on. We've seen him do so well at the World Championships in Kelowna. A very, very fine runner. He can do around 32, 33 minutes for the run. So I would look to him to be able to hold the pace. You predicted that the swim time would be slower. Uh, what's your feeling on the time here in the heat and on this flat French countryside? Do you think the pace is uh, up to snuff? Well, I do, but the man it's going to affect a lot is the man to the right of our picture there, who was uh, Mike Pig. This man, Miles Stewart, well, he can do so well in any of the events. He's also a very fine roller skater, believe it or not. He's just 18 years of age and he's already at this sort of world-class level. The Oz is certainly expecting big things of him. His coach is, in fact, his father, and he's there to support him as well as the rest of the Australian team. If you look at that uh, handlebar there, you see that thing coming out there. That's a straw, so he doesn't even have to reach down to get any liquids or electrolyte replacements. We, of course, uh, by virtue of our coverage, are watching the Americans and the Aussies and Kiwis lead the way, French television, focusing on the men's division. And it's important to remember that this competition, a world championship, is being contested on both the men's and women's sides. And let's talk a bit, Steve, about the Canadian perspective. And I know the women are just now coming out of the Rhone. Yes, uh, it's unfortunate we're not getting to see them at this point. But I do expect a challenge to be there between the Americans and the Canadians as far as the women are concerned. We have the world-class twins, Sylviane and Patricia Pantus. We have Carol Montgomery, Kendall Morrison, Sue Schlatter, and Terry Smith-Ross. A phenomenal team. They should do very well. On the men's side, we have Mark Bates, Simon Casty, who we've already seen, Scott LeDrew, Dan Murray, Mike Sterling, and Paul White. Paul White, of course, was the big surprise this year. We're talking about Canadian surprises. This was the Aussie surprise. Just 18 years of age, winner already of 13 races in this triathlon season. What about age in triathlon? Does it hurt or help to have youth on your side? 
what we've what we've noticed over the past few years is that it really doesn't hinder the athletes because many of the world's top triathletes including dave scott the six-time hawaiian ironman world champion is in his early 30s and he certainly hasn't slowed down because he's won two usts races already this year this lead pack is comprised of the international stars and the professionals there are various classifications steve in the competition and one of those classifications I would like to mention is the age group, as we have a top Canadian in there who's doing very well at this point, and that's Paul Granger, who in fact just last week won the World Police and Fire Games that were held in Vancouver. He was also the organizer of that event, so he's really pleased to be here in Avignon this week. Bottom right of your screen is Garrett McCarthy of the United States, and at the top left is the leader, Richard Wells of New Zealand, number 60, and he's trying to set a quick pace We've mentioned frequently he's not a great runner, he's certainly a good runner, but in a field that features the likes of Mike Pig and Mark Allen, it's pivotal for Wells to try and get some kind of a cushion going into the last 10K run. It is indeed, and I don't think it's just the pace that's going to affect the triathletes today. I think it's also the weather out there. It's very, very hot, so they have to take lots of liquid. Glenn Cook of Great Britain goes by Mike Pig of the U.S. Mike Pig has appeared in British Columbia, Steve, on several occasions, and he's commercially well-backed and well-liked for being an ambassador to the sport. He certainly is, and we were pleased to see him the last couple of years at the Vancouver International, where he placed second on both occasions to Mark Allen. The front-running duel has been between Richard Wells of New Zealand and this man, Garrett McCarthy of the United States, one of the three Americans heading the way here in the 40K cycling portion of the World Triathlon, and now we see how it is McCarthy got the lead once more. And in slow-mo, it's not that impressive, obviously. These cyclists are going at speeds of anywhere from 40 to 50 kilometers per hour. This is over the overpass past the main highway, and as a result, at a slower speed in the climb, maybe a missed gear. At any rate, Garrett McCarthy, once again, distancing himself from the pack, but Wells and Allen, Cook, Pig are all in the hunt, and there you see the top five bikes from overhead. And it might be a bit of a sight job, job as far as uh, Richard Wells is concerned at this point, because he knows he can beat McCarthy on the run. However, I wonder if he knows that McCarthy has placed in the top five in three recent U.S. Triathlon Series races. There's Mark Allen. He's looking just phenomenal. He'll be trying to keep up a cadence of around 90 RPM. He looks like he's doing that, and he's in a very high gear as well. So he's motoring, probably around 40 kilometers an hour at this point. As a rule, Steve, where do these athletes hit the wall? Does it occur in this phase of the competition or in the last? You rarely see triathletes hitting the wall except in an event like an Ironman. This is one person I don't expect to hit the wall because, as I mentioned earlier, he is capable of a 29.12. That's his PR for 10 kilometers. But what a surprise it will be if this young man can hold on to this sort of performance and finish well up in the top five. That is Miles Stewart from Australia. But the man in the picture there, just going past us, Glenn Cook, the Brit, just ahead of him, Mark Allen, still in third position. Mark Allen did experience some difficulty in the first Nice triathlon. There weren't sufficient aid stations, and he's an athlete who likes to replenish the electrolytes in the water, and he really has gotten to know his body. He had a bad experience in Hawaii once in an Ironman competition as well, so it's really been a, a process of understanding himself and his needs that allows him to compete so successfully in these endeavors. There's Garrett McCarthy, who had the lead, and Richard Wells and he have been jockeying back and forth and you can see that once again the cyclist from New Zealand is in the lead. And I certainly would like to see Richard take this one. I know a lot of New Zealanders would too, but they would also like to see Erin Baker take it and we'll get back to find out what's happening in the women's very shortly. Richard Wells of New Zealand followed by the Americans Garrett McCarthy, Mark Allen, Mike Pig and also front running is Miles Stewart of Australia as they move into the Final stages of this 40-kilometer cycling event. They've gone the 1.75. Wells was the leader after the first phase, and it looks as though he might be after phase two as well. We'll be back with the conclusion of cycling in the World Triathlon Championship after this. Your Texaco retailer isn't faster than a speeding bullet. He can't leap tall buildings in a single bound. And he's slightly less powerful than a locomotive. But when you need service, he's there. Besides, he's a super guy. Expect more from Texaco. Will that be all? You got a phone booth around here? 
Your Toyota dealer is sharpening his pencils to give you the sharpest deals in town on 89 Toyotas. So hurry down. Right now, you just can't miss. Your Toyota dealer is sharpening his pencils to give you the sharpest deals in town on 89 Toyotas. So hurry down. The deals are hotter than ever. Still ahead, join Sports Weekend in Montreal for Flights of Fancy as an international cast of the world's greatest entertainers and showstoppers perform in a competitive exhibition of style, grace, and championship brilliance for the whole world to see. Stay tuned, because Sports Weekend's putting on the glitz with Jeep Cup figure skating. A lovely aerial shot of the Rhone River, the valley that surrounds Avignon, France, some 50 miles north of Marseille, where we're on site for the World Triathlon Championships. And it's still Richard Wells of New Zealand, just ahead of Garrett McCarthy of the United States as we move into the final phases of the men's cycling. Steve, what about the women's race? Well, it's very exciting right now. What I've heard is that Jan Ripple of the U.S. and Erin Baker of New Zealand are going head-to-head -head on the bike. So I am really expecting big things, but I would anticipate Baker being able to take it on the run. But Canadians also doing very well. I understand we have four ladies in the top ten as they move out onto the bike segment. We're terribly sorry we can't show you those pictures. Uh, the coverage is courtesy of French television, and we are getting some lovely shots of this race. But their focus is the men's and the 40-kilometer cycling competition, phase two of the three in the triathlon. And Wells of New Zealand continues to lead, and you can see just how tight it is as they move into the final phases. Now McCarthy has slingshotted himself by and is into the race lead again as we get to kilometer 38, just over a kilometer to go in this portion of the event. So although individually New Zealand are, are doing very well in the men's and the women's race, it looks obvious that the U.S. are leading right now when it comes to the men's race because there's Mike Pick up there and there's Mark Allen also. And don't forget, it's the first three males from each country that will represent the official finishers for the country and they will tally up the point scoring. From time to time there's a bit of camera breakup. Those are RF remote cameras which are used in a competition like this. The only chance you have to get close to the competitor is on motorcycle or via helicopter and as a result the technology of microwaving the signal can often result in that small bit of breakup. It's not affecting the competition nor the drama as we see McCarthy and Wells and the Americans in hot pursuit as they move into the final phase. What about the transition from swim to cycle versus cycle to the 10K run? Which is more difficult in Europe? Well, I tend to think that the swim to the bike um, is a little easier because they're out there, they haven't kicked as hard as maybe they would normally if it was just a swimming race, but the transition from bike to run can be pretty tough because different leg muscles being used and it takes a little while for them to get into the pace but again vital seconds can be saved in that transition era so we'll wait to see what happens there and who goes out first onto the run other than that i do expect them to take refreshments and liquids as they come out off the transition and onto the run but i'm sure the french are just fascinated by what they're seeing up front here going to and fro between these two men out front but there's an Italian I understand who's searing through the field at this point so we'll, we'll see what the finish times are but usually in a 40k race someone like a Mike Pig can do 55 to 57 minutes. You really have to be good at all three disciplines don't you? It's, it's not enough to be an outstanding cyclist and try and get a lead that's sufficient to nurse through the 10k run. It's, it's gotten to the point where there's such representation around the world that you have to be outstanding in all three disciplines. Absolutely, and if triathlon is going to be a viable sport, that's the way it has to be. Here they move into the transition area now, and it's Garrett McCarthy of the United States moving in and closely in behind Richard Wells of New Zealand. And, and once again, this is a rather convoluted area where there are all kinds of barricades and fans, and when you're tired, Often it can be a real test to just negotiate the switch. It certainly can, and we'll wait to see just what happens here. You see, they've still got a ways to go, and it's interesting because there is seeding within the transition area. Some of them will have further to run or go with their bikes as they did from the swim to the bike. And their times appear to be around 58 minutes plus, so I would expect Pig and Allen to go a little faster than that. 
Garrett McCarthy of the United States is first off his cycle and now will go through this frantic process. There you see Richard Wells of New Zealand as they get set to move into the 10 kilometer run. What about the leader, McCarthy? Well, anything can happen. I said that, you know, I didn't expect him to be out front at this point. I thought he'd lose just a little on the bike and I wouldn't anticipate that he could hold on to the run. Uh, however, with a crowd like it is, he looks like he's getting lost there now. They've sent him right on the right track. But with a crowd the size it is, who knows what can happen? All sorts of adrenaline must be pumping through him at this point. As is for Richard Wells in second place. And the man now just coming in in third place, Mark Allen. He certainly needs to be flying as he takes off out onto the run. We'll see if he can save some valuable seconds. Richard Wells making the pass very early into the run portion. He certainly has to pace himself because the heat's taken its toll on Richard in previous races. This is one man who can handle the heat on the shorter races. However, you mentioned earlier, Ron, that he has been affected by the heat when it came to Nice a few years ago and in Hawaii. But Richard Wells now assumes the lead over Garrett McCarthy. Wells has maintained a lead throughout most of this triathlon, and now it's a matter of can he sustain. He's in the front-running position. Uh, he will be looking to get back some of the lost water and lost electrolytes. New Zealand, a very strong field of competitors who will also qualify for the Commonwealth Games in Auckland, New Zealand in January, so they'll not only be buoyed by the fans here in France, but in the not-too-distant future, the fans at home. And I have no doubt that Richard Wells will represent New Zealand there in the demonstration sport of triathlon and hopefully in swimming. And this man, hopefully, we will see him in all sorts of events in the future. But what a season he's already had. I mentioned the World Cup. He, in fact, had joint win there with his fiancée, Julie Moss. And he's a man I do expect to be able to make up all sorts of time. We've had the official splits on the bike. It was a 58-14 for Richard Wells, a 58-17 for Garrett McCarthy. But it was a 57-17 for Mark Allen. So he did make up a minute there. And we've just heard also that Mike Pig's in transition now and his split exactly the same as Mark Allen's of 57-17. So it's all come down to the run. And there's Mark Allen now. He's been joined by Glenn Cook, who's at the front of that group from Great Britain. And in the back, the Aussie Miles Stewart. And this may help Allen as those two have made up a lot of ground joining the American in his pursuit of the leader, Richard Wells. Well, they can certainly help him push the pace because both men are capable of very fast 10k running times. Miles Stewart has a PR of 29.12. That's just phenomenal running. And this is for a guy whose background really is cycling and roller skating, believe it or not. He was a Queensland champion and he's still only 18 years of age. There's the man who hopes to hang on. Richard Wells of New Zealand will be back to Avignon, France in the World Triathlon Championship on CBC Sports Weekend following these commercial messages. Now, when you pull into an Esso station, you're going to get something new. Something with improved cleaning power. Something that is designed for better performance. A premium gasoline. A premium gasoline that can help deliver peak performance in cars that demand more than regular. Announcing the launch of new Esso Supreme Gasoline. Your Toyota dealer's been sharpening up the deals on a few of the 89s. Okay, pencil, to work. But that pencil was just bent on giving a sharp deal on every 89 in stock. Whoa, stop! Look at all those cars in place! <laughs> Enough! I'll fix it this time, light for head! The sharpest deals on every new 89, but not much time. We're back in Avignon, France. Richard Wells from New Zealand, the race leader in the 10K portion of this World Championship Triathlon. And just in the rear of your picture, you see now moving into contention, Mark Allen of the U.S. There was a 40-second gap between Wells and Allen in the cycle transition area moving into this run, but the distance is being made up. It certainly is. It looks like we've only got about eight to nine seconds between the two lead men. I mentioned the cycle time we heard earlier of 57.17. We've just heard an Italian, Danilo Palmucci, has recorded a 54.38, so two and a half minutes faster than that man, Mark Allen. However, 
Uh, I don't believe he can run very fast and I don't expect him to make up any more ground. Certainly this is the man we have to watch now because I believe he can hold it there and become the world champion. Mark Allen, 007. And he is pursuing that man, Richard Wells of New Zealand, who obviously is is laboring now as he moves into the midway portion of this 10k run he's not looking behind not running with the same vigor that he demonstrated in the swimming or cycling portions of the competition whereas you can see that Allen is methodically moving ahead and, and reeling in the front runner Yes, and he's already dropped Glenn Cook, but Glenn Cook's a very fine runner. I don't expect him to lose too much ground, nor do I expect Miles Stewart to lose too much ground either. And those two can hang on, but we've got the other European out there, Rob Burrell. I hear he's doing very well now, and he's pulling back some places. The Europeans aren't as strong in this competition as I'm sure the local fans might like. The Australians and Americans have dominated triathlon. Do you see an improvement in the European forces. Oh, we certainly have seen that. And the other thing we've seen is uh, the Canadians are doing extremely well. I've just heard that Dan Murray, Paul White and Simon Casty, they are all in the top 20 at this point. So team-wise doing extremely well. Richard Wells of New Zealand nursing a slim lead now over Mark Allen of the United States. McCarthy has dropped well back. Mike Pig is in the hunt. But these two are really the show right now. And the French really enjoying the race. They'll be saddened, of course, because their champion, Yves Cordier, is injured and can't be in the race. So disappointment for the French, but what a race we are seeing today. And Allen is really closing ground. A 40-second gap after the cycling portion. Now it's down to just mere seconds as Wells tries to hold on. And both men looking somewhat tired and thirsty. And Mark Allen relentless in his pursuit of 60. And he's found himself in this position on many occasions in the past. Richard Wells looking anxious, looks over his shoulder, sees Mark Allen. He knows what's about to happen and we're about to see it because there goes Mark Allen. He's going to make the pass, so Mark Allen, our present leader. Even the cameras are tired at this stage of the competition. The RF cameras experiencing difficulty with the microwave transmission. And that's because of the heavy foliage and all the trees in and around the course getting the signal back to the plant So is a problem. Well, as we've seen the drama unfold on the individual basis, I understand other things are happening on the team basis because two other Aussies are now in the picture. We have Brad Bevan moving up on the run, as is Spot Anderson. Spot apparently had a puncture out there, lost two and a half minutes, but he's making up all sorts of ground on the run. So three Aussies now in the top ten. Like the America's Cup, the Aussies and the Americans contesting the team title, and it's Mark Allen of California for the USA to the lead, New Zealand's Richard Wells being applauded and trying to hold on to either second or third. And here's Miles Stewart, the 18-year-old Australian who's the top of the Aussies. He certainly is, and there's a lot of prestige involved in being the first from your own country as well as placing highly in this race. So Miles Stewart would love to beat the other Aussies in the race. He's done so before. In fact, he had a fantastic race against Nick Croft in Frankston. It came down to a win just by 20 metres, and that's one of Australia's biggest races. But what a phenomenon this young man is. Just turned 18 in May of this year. It's really a nifty format for the competition. This is the first World Triathlon Championship in this format and with uh, such sanction. Maybe you could explain that, Steve. Well, there's been a disunity in the world body before. However, this year they got together and met in Avignon and formed the International Triathlon Union and they officially sanctioned this event as the first ever. Last year we saw a World Championships in Kelowna and uh, in fact this man who we're seeing now, Mark Allen, placed second to Mike Pig in that one. That was a very exciting race but this is the first official World Championships now there's Glenn Cook of Great Britain who has moved into second place as he goes by Richard Wells. Cook, the Brit, number 115, into second spot as he goes after Mark Allen, the American. And this was the man who placed fourth last year in Kelowna at the World Championships and in third place was Australian Stephen Foster. Now just wait till you see the turnaround here because the local populace have written on the road, Go Mark, and I'm sure that's really going to inspire him. There we are, Go Mark. Mark Allen leading, well clear now and opening up a bigger and bigger gap. One of the things you often experience in Europe is the fans' true appreciation of the superior athlete, regardless of the competition, skiing, Tour de France. If the athlete is tops in his field, he is going to get support, and that's the case for Allen, although I have a hunch it might have been an American that was with the, the spray can earlier in the day getting ready for the turn. This represents now 
Virtually the halfway point in the 10K run, Allen of the United States leading over Cook with about five kilometers to go. And we must remember why the French love this man, because the Nice event has been held for eight years, and this man has competed in it on six occasions, and he's won each and every time he's competed in it. So as Dave Scott is to the Hawaiian Ironman, so Mark Allen is to the Nice Triathlon. And the French people, they love their athletes. What about a finishing kick? Miles Stewart has shown us the ability to put forth a great time. Does he put forth a good kick? Um, he can, obviously, with that sort of leg speed, but I also know that Richard Wells wants to place in that top three. So Richard Wells does have it mentally. It's a matter of whether he can hold on and be strong. Moving along very comfortably, it would appear at this stage, with about four and a half kilometers remaining in the last phase of the World Triathlon Championship. And this will be the first time an athlete is crowned under the present banner of World Championship. Allen would like to be that man, and he'd also like to lead the Americans to a team victory. The Americans and the Aussies are hooked up in a battle for one-two. Canada's doing well in both men's and women's competition. We're not seeing the Canadian athletes, though, as French television sticks with the leaders here. But we have heard that Sylviane and Patricia are in fifth and sixth places, and Carol Montgomery is just behind them, and I understand Kendall Morrison is in tenth place at this point. So. Four Canadian women in the top ten doing extremely well. We'd certainly like them to see uh, beat the Americans, but I believe the Americans have placed second, third, and fourth at this point, so I can't see them quite doing that. There is the USA's Mark Allen in the lead with just kilometers remaining now in this 10K competition. The runners in the French countryside of the Rhone Valley moving toward Avignon. And you can see that Richard Wells, the New Zealander, is trying to hang on. It looked like irreversible fatigue had set in, but now Wells and Cook are dueling for second spot, and really a tremendous effort by Richard Wells to get back into this hunt for second. But Glenn Cook, what can you say about him? What a fine race he's having. He's made up one and a half minutes on Richard Wells since the transition, and this man, Miles Stewart, just 18 years of age, what a race, a race of a lifetime. Few people would have believed he could have come to a competition with these quality triathletes and be where he is, in fourth place overall at this point. Mark Allen trying to fight off the heat here in France. Temperatures hovering in and around 30 degrees Celsius, and of course with the endurance and the temperature combined, it's a grueling finish for Allen and the rest of the field. Right now, Mark Allen of the United States, number 007, is in the lead, but in behind, Richard Wells of New Zealand, Miles Stewart of Australia, Glenn Cook of Great Britain, as we have a tremendous duel for second spot. We'll be back with the conclusion of the World Triathlon Championship in a moment. Follow Formula One's elite on the trail to autosport excitement. Sports Weekend circles the globe from Brazil to Australia, chronicling the battle for the Grand Prix title. Team McLaren bids for its fifth world championship in six years, while 19 other teams offer up a challenge. Our next race, the Italian Grand Prix, Sunday, September 10th. Back at the World Triathlon Championship as the runners now move into the town of Avignon, population of just over 100,000, and this man's the lone one in the fast lane. Mark Allen of the United States leads his closest pursuers, Wells of New Zealand, Cook of Great Britain, but really, Steve, they're not that close. They're not that close. He's got over a minute's lead. He's looking behind him just to check, but he now knows he's well clear, and he's in the final kilometer. He'll be able to hear the voice of the announcer. There it is. He knows he's the winner. He's going to take home the 1989 World Championship title. He will take it back to the States, and then he'll be thinking about the team title. Behind him, there are two men, Mike Pig of the States, of course, and his other teammate who's out there. We believe he's in about 11th place. That's Brooks Clark. So can they hold on for the team title? Because there are three Australians in the top 10, and the Canadians, three of them in the top 20. It always amazes me how cool the competitors remain he seems to have his head about him as he checks for the competition what about concentration in these last phases of an event well mark allen is the past master i called him the zen master but this man's been in this position so many times and what a season i mentioned the world cup gold coast america's paradise nice president's triathlon and here he is about to take the world championships in avignon that's another aspect of this event that i find intriguing many of the competitors who 
raced as recently as a week ago, are now competing in a world championship. What about the layover, and how often can you compete and be competitive? Well, these guys are professionals. They train seven hours a day just so they can go out there and race all over the world. He's raising his arm in victory. He knows he's got it. There'll be a smile across his face very shortly because he's also going to get a sub two-hour clocking, and that's very fast considering the extended length of the swim course. Mark Allen of the United States before a throng of French and international supporters coming to the finish line to claim the 1989 World Triathlon Championship. And look at the crowd really enjoying this and lapping up every moment is that champion Mark Allen. What a great performance. Took it away from the field. Mike Pig, I believe, is in about sixth or seventh place at this point, so he won't be too happy. But what a great day for the U.S. They may wrap up the team title as well. Allen had to overcome the disadvantage of the swim. The Olympic distance, 1.5 kilometers, but for this race, because they expected the current to favor the swimmers, they extended that by a quarter of a kilometer, and that was said to hurt some of the principal American competitors. It hasn't affected this man, 007. And he's well over a minute clear at this point. He's coming up. He hits the line. What a performance of 158.46, clocking for Mark Allen. So the United States captures top spot in the individual competition on the strength of Allen's run. And they likely will nail down first in the team competition, although the Aussies have a challenge in the event. Pig and Garrett McCarthy will no doubt round out the team for the U.S. and give them the shot at top prize. And there is Cook of Great Britain now moving in, and he seems to have put some distance between himself and Richard Wells of New Zealand. Len Cook looking for a second spot here. He has, and he'll also be trying to get under the two-hour mark. We've heard Alan split. It was a 33.07, and I believe this man is not far behind in the overall split. He's looking around just to make sure he certainly wants to hang on to that second spot. Great Britain will be delighted about this because I don't think any other of their athletes are in the top 20 at this point. So rather than the team competition, they're going for individual glory. Many different body shapes in this event, but one thing they all have in common is very little body fat. Just tremendous physical specimens, all conditioned to endure the competition, the stamina, and of course the speed that provides a nice mix in triathlon. And there he is, he hits the line for second place, his time, two hours and three seconds. And as we saw him finishing, we saw other triathletes still coming in off the bikes and others going out onto the run. In third place coming in now is also Richard Wells, the New Zealander. Mark Allen, the winner with the French reporters. Mark, how did you feel during this race? Uh, the swim, I didn't feel so good. The bike started to pick it up and the run, I felt really good the first half. Allen was 40 seconds behind this man coming through the cycling portion of the competition. Richard Wells had that lead. It was quickly erased by the front runner, but Wells, doubtless, delighted to come in third place for New Zealand. Just over two minutes behind the victor, Allen. When did you really know uh, you were winning? When I hit the turnaround of the run, I had about 35 seconds on Glenn, and I felt like I just maintained I, I, I could win. No surprise here, Steve. Not at all. What a great performance, and what a great performance from this young man taking fourth place overall, and I think his split for the run is going to be the fastest ever. He's under 33 minutes for his run split. A tremendous performance from this 18-year-old Australian taking fourth place in the World Championships, and his time, 2.01.38. And that is a 32-28 10K split. And the second European, it is Rob Burrell from Holland, also coming in with a very fine performance. Fifth place overall for Rob Burrell. And there's another Aussie who's joining the front runners. Bevan now appears to be the best bet for sixth place. And there you see Brad Bevan of Australia. And chasing him out is Mike Pig. So just a few seconds between these two. So Brad Bevan has pulled up on the run, looking behind, just checking out. So the second Aussie is now home. It'll be interesting to see what happens here between third places from the US and the Australian teams. A tremendous race individually for Mark Allen. He led Pig and McCarthy to the finish line and the Australians with Miles Stewart showing the way, and here are some of the other competitors now. That's a third-place European. It's Carl uh, Blondiel from Belgium. 
and he takes eighth place overall. In ninth place, it looks like Spot Anderson who's coming down to the wire there. So that'll be three Australians will be the first team in. That is Spot Anderson. Look at him motoring too. Unmistakable. And he certainly is, and what a guy. He's a real fun guy just to be around. There he is, got the zinc all over his face. And what a great run from him too. So a tremendous showing for the Aussies and the Americans with Mark Allen leading the pack to a victory here in the World Triathlon Championship. To review the official order of the top six, Allen, Cook, Wells, Miles Stewart, Burrell, and Brad Bevan. In the real story of the team event, Canada third with Dan Murray and Paul White of Ontario and Simon Cassidy of British Columbia. Seven seconds between them, they finished 13th, 14th, and 17th. And the women's race here in Baker over Jam Ripple, but the story there, the Canadian second in the team event. Sylviane and Patricia Pantus fifth and sixth, Cara Montgomery seventh, and Kendall Morrison ninth. A brilliant performance from our Canadian women and the men. Third in the men, second in the ladies. So that's the story from Avignon, France. For Steve King, I'm Ron McLean as we send you back to Sports Weekend Control in Toronto. All right, thank you, Ron. A tremendous showing by our Canadians. Congratulations to the Canadians, the men's team finishing third, the women's second. Updating Major League Baseball this afternoon. Home runs by Kelly Gruber and Ernie Witt. Toronto Blue Jays defeat Minnesota 4-2. Jays lead Baltimore by a game and a half in the Eastern Division. Orioles play in Chicago tonight. The Expos three back of the Cubs will play the Dodgers in Los Angeles tonight. Up next, a very special figure skating exhibition. You'll enjoy it as CBC Sports Weekend will continue. Triathlons have become part of a booming movement towards total physical fitness. Two international triathlons stand out. There's the Ironman in Hawaii and the Nice France International, the annual race often regarded as the world championship of this sport which combines swimming, cycling and running. It is quite simply the ultimate physical challenge in a setting that is breathtakingly unique. International Triathlon, regarded as one of the top three in the world. More than 700 athletes from 23 nations, among them 34 women, facing a course longer and tougher than ever before. The race begins with a four kilometer swim, a full kilometer longer than previously in the Mediterranean Sea. From the Bay of Angels to the hills of the Maritime Alps, for the 120 kilometer bike ride over the toughest course in the world, it's a time when the locals keep the kids off the road. The race ends with a run along the seafront past Nice Airport, a 32-kilometer round trip to end a very hard day. As always, the top triathletes are in town. The number one is Scott Tinley from the U.S., four times in the top three, never the winner. With 90 minutes still to go to the start, Tinley makes sure he's ready. Scott Molina, another American, has twice finished second and once third. Victory also eludes him. He wins mostly in America. So how different is a European event? It's much different. Um, they allow a lot more vehicles on the course in Europe. Uh, they allow a lot more bicycle traffic, mopeds. There's a lot more traffic in general. The roads are a lot um, more difficult. Leading the European challenge is Holland's Rob Burrell. 
who's won 17 times already this year and is one of the few who can be favored among the Americans. This race, by the way, has never been won by a European. France has a favorite too, in Yves Cordier, a resident here in Nice. Last year, he was a spectator after breaking his collarbone. Rumors are he's back in shape. Among the women, the strong favorite is New Zealand's Erin Baker. She won in 1985, but was disqualified in 1986 after she received unofficial help along the route from her sister. Because of this, she gave Nice a miss last year. You can't look back at bad business decisions and that, you know, perhaps was one for me or whatever else, but, you know, I think this is a great race. It's probably the course that I like the most in the world. So, as I said, it's the best thing for me to be here and I just look forward to race day. Baker's closest challenge should be her old rival, Colleen Cannon from the U.S. The two are good friends and train together, but Cannon aims to repeat her win four years ago. And here's the girl who's tipped her hat to the European challenge against America and New Zealand. She's Sarah Coop from Sussex in England. Sarah was second in 1986 and has been a professional now for three years. With so many competitors, getting them ready can be a problem. But here in Nice, there are 2,000 volunteers to make sure everyone is ready on time. And in a sport where no help is allowed and food and drink can only be taken from the official aid stations, the preparations before the race are both meticulous and absolutely vital. With the water at its warmest for years, the race is ready to start as 9 o'clock approaches. Safety precautions are evident. For the serious competitors, the prize list of 75,000 is their target, with the best man winning 12,000 and the best woman 11,000. There's even a veterans award as well. But for all of the entries, the real target is simply to finish. That in itself, a great achievement in the eyes of most who take part. This began as an all-American sport. Now everyone, it seems, enjoys it. The voice of René Tremoni says just two minutes to go to the start of the 1988 Nice International Triathlon. We'll be back with more on Sports Weekend in just a moment. These little bunnies have been drumming non-stop for an amazing 18 hours. Aww. So if you've always thought the Duracell batteries are the only ones that last, maybe you should think again. Energizer. Absolutely nothing lasts longer. We don't want to knock the competition. No, no, no. no this no. friendly tap on the shoulder is just our way of saying, come on, Duracell, what makes you think you're the only one that lasts? Yeah. You know as well as we do, nothing lasts longer than Energizer. Among the lavish appointments of our refurbished international executive class, are new seats that are designed to give you a luxurious amount of space. In fact, there's so much room for your legs and feet. We only hope the comforts of our new executive class won't go to your head. To an already fabulous lineup, John Deere introduces the outrageously inexpensive STX lawn tractors. Inexpensive, but not cheap. Smooth, quiet. They shift on the go, not the usual stop and go. And a turning radius that's the tightest in its class. Why get saddled with the cheap seats when you can move up to a new STX? Not cheap, just outrageously inexpensive. It's Deere season at your local John Deere dealer. Come in for big savings. For a limited time, the Nissan Sentra comes with a four-speaker stereo cassette system. And air conditioning at no extra charge. 
and save $1,600 in options now on a Nissan Sentra. For $11,789, you can bulk up a hard body king cab with all these options, and we'll throw in this attractive carrying case for nothing. For $900 worth of options at no extra cost, see your nearest Nissan dealer now. If you weren't watching Sports Weekend, here's what you missed. Yes! Oh, yes! Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Rob Boyd with a sensational run! standing on their feet here. Everybody is up for Canada's first drowning. The mayor of the Canadian with the flags waving. He's got a good looking shot. They are brushing it hard. She has to be full eight foot. They are working hard on it. Still got a lot of rotation, but she's got it. Maybe too much. Maybe too much. She has got a good one. She is going to hit she that rock right, right on the nose. Don't jump, turtles. That's for clearly. So Canada will score two on end number 10. And Canada celebrates a world championship. No! no. no. He missed he it! The pass. Unbelievable! And his Canadian wings have won the world championship. This guy absolutely hummed that rock down there, and he just touched the corner. You talk about the game of curling being very cruel to Pat Lyon last year. It has been very beneficial to him this year. Here it is. And Ian Miller, Miller, and Ian Miller has done it. Ian Miller and Big Ben, just superb. They have won their second consecutive World Cup. What a marvelous performance by this great combination. Ian Miller and Big Ben. Sports Weekend, where champions come to life all season long. Well, a look at some of the champions of 1989 is seen here in Sports Weekend. You know, two weeks from today, we'll be celebrating the 10th anniversary of Sports Weekend with some of the heroes and the memories who made sports history during the past 10 years. Steve Armitage from CBC Vancouver, of course, has seen a number of those events. Today, he's very busy as the voice of the triathlon. And right now, he is joined by Steve King, a resident of Penticton, British Columbia, and CBC's triathlon expert. Welcome back to the Bay of Angels. The French resort of Nice is getting ready to receive more than 700 athletes in the 7th Nice International Triathlon. Steve, this is the one point in the race that I think the triathletes fear more than any other, the mass start in swimming. Indeed it is, because they have the possibility of getting kicked in the face or the chest, and that's the last thing they need to happen. Things will start to sort themselves out after about two to three hundred meters. But what they would have been sensible in doing was self-seeding, and indeed that's what they do do, because these guys realize the last thing they need is any injuries early on. But this particular bay, I want to mention, is notorious for its undercurrents and stinging jellyfish so as you can see as they went in most of them were wearing wetsuits not only because it's been proven that they can make the swimmers go faster but also so that they don't end up getting stung by a jellyfish it's also important for the contenders to get out in front as quickly as possible and that means speed at the start of the race yes indeed the major contenders in the swim portion obviously want to get to that buoy right up front you can see there's a couple of them spearheading groups others are drafting off them that that is to cut down on the water resistance but they'll be zooming in trying to go for that buoy and be the first ones there and the man in our picture now is Yves Cordier the French champion the man the French want to see win this one he's been up there right up front a couple of times but he's never won it he seems to lose out when it comes down to the run portion and he's one of the better swimmers he certainly is I would expect him certainly to be in the first two or three coming out of the water just on the far side of him, though, a man who took off on the other side of the mass start is Englishman Glenn Cook. He was a man we saw in Canada in August uh, when he placed fourth in the Reebok World Championships. Scott Tinley, not one of the better swimmers. Not one of the better swimmers, but it's a discipline he's certainly worked on in the last few years. I can expect Scott to come out maybe two to three minutes behind the leader. 
What about Molina as a swimmer? Well, Molina as a swimmer is a very good swimmer, but for the past 18 months, his performances have suffered. Karen Smyers from the US, one of New England's greatest triathletes, and she placed seventh last year in this race, so we can expect her out there. I would expect to see her maybe in the top four or five out of the swim. Jan Wanklin, I think she's the dominant force when it comes to swimming from Australia. I think she'll be number one out of the water. Have you ever met an Australian who wasn't a strong swimmer? Exactly. That surface paradise, that's where they practice. What a beautiful setting for this race, Nice, France. Nice, by the way, getting its name from the Greeks. It means victory. Now, as they approach the 800-meter buoy, we can see Bernard of France is leading, followed by Cordier of France. So the Frenchman on top in the early stages of this triathlon. Yes, and of course, the thousands of spectators that are lining the Promenade des Anglais would love to see Laurent Bernard coming out in front in the swim, or Yves Cordier. It's wide open. Colleen Cannon on our screen right now. Colleen Cannon can expect to be right up there too. She's placed highly in this event before. It's good to see her back in the race, and she'll be gunning for a win. We saw her in Vancouver for the VIT triathlon, so she's well known to Canadian spectators. What about the water temperature? Would this be a factor for the U.S. Uh, swimmers? I don't think it's going to affect them. Many of them are from California. I understand the temperature is around 21 degrees centigrade, so that's beautiful. And uh, apart from the wetsuits, of course, this is salt water they're swimming in, so the buoyancy is A1. This will certainly help their times. It's been listed as a fall kilometer course. It'll be interesting to see what they come out of the water in. I would think that pacing would be very important. You can't go out too quickly simply because you've got to have enough left in reserve for that grueling bike and the run. Up to a point, but one of the things you'll notice about many of the swimmers, they really don't use their legs too much. It's a lot of arm strength, whereas when they move into transition and get onto the bikes, then it comes down to leg strength. Jan Wanklin from Australia is the leader amongst the women right now, and she's right up there with the men. She could really swim. She certainly can. I would expect her to be on a real four-kilometer course, maybe around 51, 52 minutes. Now, what would you expect uh, from the men in terms of a time? Well, you've got to remember for the Ironman, for instance, 3.8 kilometers. The fastest time there has been around 47.30. Now, we should point out that this is not a true Ironman competition. No, indeed it isn't. The distances are peculiar just to the Nice Triathlon. But wait till you see that cycling course, you'll understand how grueling this event really becomes. Total time probably for the leaders today will be six hours, but every single second counts. This really could come down to the wire today. There you see the leading men as they approach another of the buoys. They will make a swim now that goes parallel to the beautiful beach area here at Nice. And again, it is Cordier and Bernard, the leaders among the men, both from France. Also in there is Rob Burrell. He's the man that the Dutch want to see win this one. Phenomenal athlete. He is a five-time European short course champion. In fact, just a couple of weeks ago, he won his fifth title but was disqualified as a race because the European Triathlon Union decided to withdraw the sanctions. So that was a misfortune, but I'm sure he'd like to vindicate that performance and come back for a win today. What a beautiful setting for a triathlon. Nice, France. And there you see the leaders once again. Cordier, Bernard. And with them in fourth place, that is Glenn Cook from Great Britain. Jan Wankling from Australia, the leading woman. Notice her looking up, getting her sighting, wants to make sure she's heading directly for that transition area. The last thing you want to do is go off course at this stage. We saw that once or twice in Canada last year. Now they're rounding the final buoy in the swimming portion of this Nice Triathlon and heading back home. Now will be coming up on shore onto the Rural Plage in front of the Meridian Hotel. If there is a swimming style that uh, seems to apply to all the triathletes, it's a long, smooth stroke, a very even stroke. Exactly. People may be looking for rapid turnover, but that's not what glides you through. It's a glide stroke that you need and doing the S under the water because you're not really pulling the water. That would be, as, that would be making too much effort. It has to be as economic as possible. 
Andrew McNaughton from Canada. He's a man we've seen right up the front in this race before, except when it came down to the run portion. One of the top cyclists in the sport. He was a man who earlier this year in Chicago beat Molina, but he came fourth in a race in Chicago to Mike Pig, the present USTS champion. McNaughton swimming alongside Jan Wankling of Australia, who continues to lead amongst the women. She does, but it looks like Mandy Dean uh, of Germany, who's in second place, just meters behind at this point. Is the swim any tougher as they get closer to the shore? I'm thinking uh, less depth of water. Maybe, but I don't think it is. I think the adrenaline's rushing, and now they're starting to think in terms of getting it together to start pulling the clothing off. You can see Yves Cordier coming out of the water there. His time around 45 minutes. I certainly have to doubt the validity of the length of the swim course, but an excellent time, 45 minutes. That looked like Laurent Bernard in second place. And that was Rob Burrell just coming through in fourth place there, but they're so close together. We'll see now what happens in transition and who gets out onto the bike course in first place. Yves Cordier just at the top of the steps. Boy, that's tough. Coming out of the water after a four-kilometer swim, you've got to go up steps exactly. to get to the bicycle transition area. Absolutely. And you can see he's got to run to the bike. They've got quite a way just to get to the machinery, but thousands of dollars worth of cycles and componentry in that transition area. Now, Steve, now what's the secret in going from the swim to the bike? Just having everything set up perfectly in the transition area, as you can see, the man here, number three, Rob Burrell, look at the speed with which he gets that wetsuit off, grabs his bike, and he'll be underway. He's got his uh, cleats already locked into his, his pedals. He'll probably start cycling without putting his feet into the shoes. There you go. And he'll be underway. He's the first man to go out, Rob Burrell from Holland. In fact, the Dutch are a very strong European nation when it comes to triathlons. They have two other men to watch for out on the field, and those will be Henry Kienz and Lucien Loyens. So Cordier, who was first out of the water, is actually second into the bicycle portion of this competition. Indeed. Glenn Cook is third. Yes, indeed. Uh, Great Britain's hopes resting on Glenn Cook. We saw him in Kelowna, fourth place, a great runner. He could do very well today. Now back to the water, and the swimmers, of course, will be coming out of the water for some time now. We have seen the leaders go through the transition area, get onto the bikes and into that portion of the triathlon, but the swimmers are still coming out. Indeed, and they'll be coming out probably for about another hour and a quarter. Now, we would expect to see yeah, the Scott first Molina one just Scott Molina through. just come out. And behind Scott, you saw Kenny Glar, known as the Beast from the East. Erin Baker, what a lady. Ironman champion, fourth place right now, but she'll be making up time on the run and the bike. She is just phenomenal in all three disciplines. That was Scott Tinley who just went by us, a two-time Ironman champion. But coming up now is that lead lady, Jan Wanklin. Andrew McNaughton just went through. Here comes Jan Wanklin of Australia, wearing the colours of Australia on her wetsuit. And watch how quickly she gets out of that wetsuit. Yes, indeed. Wetsuit's now specifically made for triathletes. You'll see the rope at the back there so they can pull them down quickly, not losing any time. Boy, this is the part that gets me. They've got to run up those stairs to get to the bikes after that swim. I can't yeah. believe it. I think the athletes would sure appreciate an elevator at that point. They have to be careful, too. You notice as they go over to their own bikes, they've got to watch out for other triathletes coming through on their bikes and out onto the bike course. And you'll see underneath the wetsuits, most of them are already changed. There are no change facilities here in the... When triathletes first got going, uh, some were out in the open, as you're seeing now, and some people actually changed uh, just there and then, regardless of spectators, and then they had change tents, but now it's set up so that people uh, have their clothing on underneath the wetsuits, and away they go. See the innovations in cycling, the handlebars there, Scott bars, they've been around now for a couple of years. You rarely see a triathlete without them. Mandy Dean from Germany, in second place, also a time under 50 minutes. Karen Smyers in third place, her time 50 minutes and 16 seconds out of the swim. She has visited Canada on a couple of occasions. Erin Baker in fourth place, a very good swim, just over 50 minutes, 50 minutes and 23 seconds. But there's no doubt in my mind, she's the lady to watch today. Mandy Dean having a little trouble there, she's forgotten something, probably a sponsor's jersey. We'll see whether Erin can make up time already on Mandy as she goes out onto the bike. 
So as the athletes make their way out onto the roads around Nice and the grueling bicycle race, we'll return with more on Sports Weekend in just a moment. Welcome back to the Nice International Triathlon, this beautiful city playing host to the toughest sporting endurance test in the world. Nice is certainly a modern town which hasn't forgotten its character, steadily developed since Roman times. As life goes on in downtown Nice, the competition in the Nice International Triathlon continues. This is Erin Baker. And it's no wonder she's ranked number one in the world. Last season, the winner of the Daikyo World Cup in Australia, the Vancouver International Triathlon, and the Reebok World Championships in Kelowna, British Columbia, as well as the Ironman in Hawaii. Steve, in the men's competition, Yves Courget of France has regained the lead. Yes, and we can expect him to actually stay within the top three because the swimming and biking are his two greatest disciplines. It's when it comes down to that third and final discipline, the run, that he tends to lose out. Remember, this portion of the triathlon is 120 kilometers over some of the toughest terrain that a triathlete will ever encounter on the bike. Indeed, and uh, let's remember the French and their history around cycling. I believe the French uh, say that cycling is there to develop the character of a person. And let's not forget the courses of the Tour de France, the Paris-Roubaix, and all the classics. Erin Baker continues her steady climb through the pack amongst the women. This is the strongest portion of her triathlon, is it not? She is now in first place. Well, she's also the fastest female runner when it comes to triathlons too, so I expect her to make inroads on the bike, to get a good lead and to hold it on the run. She's been training with Scott Molina in Boulder, Colorado. She is fit as is Scott Molina now. Yves Courget of France, the leader among the men. And there is a tremendous amount of pressure on that man. This course is going to be a true test of nerves, technique and strength. All sorts of climbs, hair raising descents, sharp bends and switchbacks. Cordier looking around to see Rob Burrell in second place and there Scott Molina, a man who would dearly love to have a win today. And to the right of Molina you see Andrew McNaughton of Canada, a phenomenal cyclist, but he tends to lose out a little bit on the run. We talked about pacing in the swimming portion of the competition. What about pacing in the bike ride? All important, especially on this tough course. Throwing caution to the wind, that's what's going to open up all sorts of time. And Rob Burrell is flying at this time. They don't call him the Flying Dutchman for nothing. And that's the battle for first place. Yves Cordier of France in front, followed by Rob Burrell. Now this is a downhill section of this bike ride and this is where they can pick up the speed. And there goes Burrell, he's going to make the pass, he looks across to see how Cordier is looking and he's made the pass. Remember they mustn't draft in this race, there are marshals out there on the motorbikes to watch for any drafting infractions, that means they can't sit on the wheel of the person in front of them. They must remain two bike lengths behind and when they make a pass they must pass three or, feet, three or four feet either side. But Burrell opened up a gap already in no time at all. And remember, this is not the Trans-Canada Highway. Exactly, and Cordier is a very good class cyclist. Magnificent scenery over this portion of the bike ride. Remember, it's 120 kilometers in distance. Scott Tinley of the United States. Scott Tinley, a man who placed second here last year. One of the greatest, one of the big four in the sport of triathlon. And Scott Tinley's wife is at the finish line. Well, in the olden days, before I had Tori, I used to finagle my way on a press vehicle. And I'd go out and I'd try to watch the race. But now that I have her, um, it's kind of a long day to expect her to be out on the course. So I watch, I stay in the transition area and uh, watch the beginning of the swim and the end of the bike and, and the start of the run and take care of her needs. No one has to take care of the needs of Erin Baker. She continues to go exceptionally well in the cycling portion of this Nice International Triathlon. 
And Erin Baker can expect to place well overall amongst the men, as she always does in every race she enters. Mandy Dean doing extremely well in second place. We certainly expected her to be there in the swim, but not in the bike. That's where we thought she'd lose some ground, and Europe's Sarah Coop. That's where she'll be wanting to make up ground, but other people, unfortunately, are having to drop out. A tough course, gravel on the road, lots of accidents in the past. In fact, two years ago, Dave Scott was out of the race with a blown tyre as he went round a corner. But that man, he's got a long walk back to the village of Nice. Very important to keep that bike in top shape because if anything goes wrong during the cycling portion, you can be in big trouble. That's a good example of how tough this course is. Rob Burrell, certainly a world-class athlete, and he's having difficulty breathing on this uh, cycle portion. As I'm sure uh, Brad Kearns on the left and Scott Tinley on the right, let's not forget the altitude these guys are climbing to as they pass through the towns and villages of Gatier, Carreau, Le Broc and Bouillon before heading back to Nice. And the Promenade des Anglais, taking water there is Scott Molina presently in fourth place. One of the things they'll all have to do is make sure they're well hydrated. He takes on some food as well. You'll notice at the end of his bars here, he has a grip shift system. That's what he changes the gears with, as opposed to the conventional system. Anything to save time and precious seconds. Yves Cordier doing extremely well. He may have lost that first position, but he's hanging on. He wants to be right up there and please that French crowd. The battle continues, Steve, between Molina and Canada's Andrew McNaughton. It does, and I would be surprised to see McNaughton let Molina go at this point, because McNaughton knows his weakest point is his running, so he has to hang in there. And certainly his strength as a cyclist is renowned. But Erin Baker, look at this, making another pass, making a move to go ahead. Extending that distance between herself and Mandy Dean, who's still in second place. Now, of course, Baker has no idea just how close Mandy Dean is, but she must be able to set. She must have a built-in timer. I think so, but I also believe Erin Baker doesn't care where other people are. She races her own race. She wants to do the best that she possibly can. Colleen Cannon, presently in third place, had some problems prior to the race. There was a mix-up with her bike. I don't think it was transported properly, so she may be on a borrowed bike. Mandy Dean in second place, doing extremely well. Looking good. I'm not sure how she is on the run. I don't believe she's competed in this event before. But Rob Burrell now back just meters away from that transition area, the Promenade des Anglais. The crowd will be ecstatic to see this Dutchman coming in first overall at this point. This is pretty well what we expected because Rob Burrell is such a strong cyclist. This is really his portion of the competition. This is Yves Courget of France. Now you can bet that when he hits this seaside promenade, he'll receive a strong round of applause. But right now it is Rob Burrell who is going to be first into the transition area. Remember, this is the completion of a 120 kilometer cycle race. He goes up the ramp and into the transition area where he will get off the bike, put on his sneakers, and head out into a 30 kilometer run. And his time for the cycle portion, three hours and 13 minutes. That is the fastest ever for this cycling course. And he's opened up a lead around seven or eight minutes over Eve Cordier, who should be coming through shortly. But behind Cordier, just about a minute behind him, is Scott Molina, now in third place. So there goes Rob Burrell. You'll hear the screaming crowds there. They want to see a European win this one. Tremendous pressure on this man. Can he relax? He looks excited right now. He knows he's got a big lead. The people in the transition area have told him they've got good communication out there on the course. He wants to be able to hang on now. It all comes down to pace judgment, keeping hydrated, keeping relaxed, not putting extra pressure on himself. That's an important point to point out. We should note that no European has won this race in its seven-year history. Mark Allen is a five-time winner. Of course, he's from the United States. And Richard Wells of New Zealand won the event in 1987. And there is Erin Baker. There's no question that she is going to be the first woman into the transition area to go from the bike race to the run. Yves Courget of France. Now, listen to the welcome he receives as he comes into the transition area. 
Shouts of Ale Alaiba. And his time on the bike portion, three hours and 20 minutes. Now, it's very important in this transition area that you don't waste any time. You've got to do it as quickly as possible. Get off the bike, get into the sneakers. As Scott Molina now, the United States, remember, he has never won this race, and he would love to win it. As Cordier puts on the sneakers and gets set for the run. 20 miles, 32 kilometers. Let's see how quickly Scott Molina does it. And Molina's time, three hours, 19 minutes. So just uh, six minutes behind Rob Burrell and about a minute faster than Yves Cordier, who's already out onto the run. Now just look how relaxed Molina appears at this time, sitting down, putting on his running shoes. He appears very cool and calm. The one thing that hasn't let him down over the past 18 months has been his running. He's known as a Terminator, and I tell you, he would give anything to have a really positive race today. He wants to get right back at the top of the international class. So Scott Molina is on his way in the run portion. And Andrew McNaughton just coming in. Andrew's time also 3.19, about 17 seconds faster than Molina's. But now I think he's going to be going backwards after the cycle. At one time, Andrew McNaughton lived in Quebec. He now resides in California as Erin Baker continues her move into the transition area. And it looks like her lead has been extended to between 15 and 18 minutes at this point. So a brilliant piece of riding from Erin. Here's Scott Tinley on the right coming through. Tinley's time around 3.23 for the bike portion. And what kind of a runner is Tinley? Tinley is a marvelous runner. He's known for coming from the back. He's done sub three hour marathons on an Ironman course, and uh, look at that. Molina moved to the right of Cordier, and he's taking him. Cordier looks across. He knows that Molina is the faster runner, so he'll be hoping that he can hold on to third position. As you predicted, Scott Molina would do well in the run. Yes, but Burrell and Molina went head-to-head -head a couple of weeks ago in Geneva, Switzerland, over an Olympic distance course, and Burrell came out the winner on that time. And there is the leader, Rob Burrell, currently in first place and looking very, very strong indeed. Meanwhile, back on the Promenade des Anglais, a couple of kilometers away from that second transition point, Erin Baker, truly dominating this race. Now, what goes through Baker's mind as she approaches the transition area? Is she thinking of the things that she'll have to go through to start to run? Indeed, I think that's exactly what's going on in her mind. She's checking herself out, looking inside, finding out, figuring out what she has left, what she has to do now. You can see already, undoing the cleats, getting ready to make that transition. She doesn't want to lose any time at all. And as we saw with Scott Molina, there is no need to panic here. You go through a carefully prepared ritual in getting off the bike, getting the sneakers on, and getting back onto the road and to start the run. Exactly. As you know, Steve, the most professional athletes in any sport are those that appear the most relaxed. Baker's time, by the way, for the bike portion of this triathlon, three hours and 32 minutes. A very good time indeed. We'll be back with more of the Nice International Triathlon on Sports Weekend in just a moment. Welcome back to the Nice International Triathlon. This is Scott Tinley, currently sitting in fourth place overall as they enter the road race portion of this triathlon. And his number there, number one, that's his seed because last year he placed second in this race to New Zealand's Richard Wells. Wells is not back in the field this year, but Tinley will be out there to make up ground on the run, as he usually does in a triathlon. He even has his own line of sports clothing, very popular with triathletes. Scott Molina, known as the Terminator, now in second place, the USTS most winningest triathlete. He's been beaten, though, consistently over the last 18 months, and he certainly wants to get back to the top of the world rankings. But the man that Scott Molina is trying to catch is right there, Rob Burrell from Holland, currently sitting in first place and looking very, very good. 
And as we said earlier, four-time European short course champion. And this lady, look at her go, Erin Baker. Look at that determination. She's looking at the ground rather than the scenery around her. Very strong arm action and upper body. Steve, at this point, she has an almost 20-minute lead over the next woman. And I think she'll be out to extend that lead because she doesn't just look at a woman's field. She wants to place well overall. Another look at this beautiful resort area. The international playground of millionaires. And right now, Rob Burrell is not too concerned about the international playground. He is just concerned about setting a pace for himself during the run. And he seems to be a lot more relaxed now. I think he's probably talking to himself. He knows the sort of time between himself and Molina. Let's not forget the Masters athletes that are out there too. There's a great battle going on for the Masters between three Frenchmen, Robert Sroker, Danny Foucault, and Jean-Jacques D'Angreville. But number three coming up to the turn, 16 kilometers into the run, and his time quite exceptional just over the one hour mark into the run. He'll be hoping that he can maintain that because that will certainly be a winning run if he can. But he'll now, you see how he checked his watch, he wants to see the time between himself and the second place man, Scott Molina, and there is Molina. Molina too will be checking that time. He knows what he's got to do to make it up. And he also knows that whereas Molina's running hasn't faltered when it comes to triathlons, it has for um, Burrell, and in fact Burrell over the last five years, any injuries have been running related injuries. You hate to see this in any race, and certainly in a triathlon. This gentleman appears to have trouble with one of the pedals on his bike, and he can't get the help, Steve. No, it's a little bit different, say, from the Tour de France or other cycling classics where you can get help, but unfortunately, that's the name of the game. Now, look at the entourage that is around Molina. Of course, they can't go in front of him because they'll be accused of pacing him, but it's, it's great to see the way the French have taken to this sport. That's Sarah Coop, the second woman in the field right now, and she has her hands full because she is trying to catch Aaron Baker, but at last count, Baker had something like a 21 or 22 minute lead. Jan Wanklin, who had a very strong swim, but faltered a little in the bike portion of the race, has now really come on strong uh, during the run. Yes, indeed. Sarah Coop pulled up nine minutes, in fact, over Jan Wanklin on the bike. Colleen Cannon, let's not forget that lady has won the race 1984, and last year, in fact, she placed second in this race. So the thing, though, is that they realize, I'm sure, that it's out of order for them to pick up on this lady. She's so far in front, and they know what a dynamo of a runner she is, and she's now approaching that turn, too. And as we look at the clock, we'll notice she is well on record pace. She, in, in fact, now is something like 30 minutes up on the second place lady. Rob Burrell is the race leader, trying to become the first European ever to win this race, and only the third runner to win, because Mark Allen won it five times, and then we had a New Zealander win in 1987. But this is Scott Molina taking water, and it's very, very important to stress that you have to take liquids during a race of this kind. Yet when this race first got underway seven years ago, there were not enough aid stations out there and the athletes really suffered. There's Scott Tinley out there. He's moved ahead of Yves Cordier of France, but Yves Cordier looking quite relaxed. I believe he should be able to hold on to that position. You would have noticed that the lead men and women there were not stopping at the aid stations as some of these people are. They've been going for over six hours now and some of these men are going, and ladies are going to really suffer out there. So it's a very wise thing for them to stop, recoup, get some hydration, take in some liquids and obviously take food as well because the race will be open for eight to nine hours officially. We talked about the Masters, and this is one of the oldest men in the field today. Look at him go. He's looking very relaxed, very calm, probably really having a good time out there. And I'm sure he's enjoying the support of the thousands of spectators, as is this man, number three, Rob Burrell, our present leader, slowing down a little. He knows he's just got a few kilometers to go, but he'll be very much aware of what's happening behind him. I'm sure he'll be asking as he goes along how far Molina is behind. And at this point, it looks as if one of the big concerns for Rob Burrell is just trying to stay cool. Yes, indeed. And he'll be thinking about last year, too. Last year, he placed six in this race, and his run split was a 2.13. He knows he's got to go faster than that today to stay ahead of this man, who looks like he could be on to a sub-two-hour clocking for the 32K. 
Is it possible in a race like this that Molina could have any sort of a finishing kick? I think it is, especially if he gets him within his sights. But it's coming down now to the wire, and I, I believe that burrell has got it. Look, you can see he's raising his arms. He's, he's taking his time. He's looking around. He's really enjoying coming up to the finish. Remember, he's wanted this win for a long, long time. And here he is, the final few meters. He's been told how far Molina is behind. He knows Molina has no chance now of catching him. Look at that. It's wonderful to see a European for the very first time taking this, the premier triathlon event in Europe. What a magnificent moment for Holland's Rob Burrell, about to become the first European to win the Nice International Triathlon. He had an excellent swim, a superb bike race, and now tops it off with a great run. And there you see his time, six hours, five minutes, and six seconds for the champion Rob Burrell of Holland. And that represents a split of 2.06. But here is Molina. Look at that. That was the distance between them. Very little in it. But Molina will be delighted with this second place finish. And it shows the caliber of these athletes. You still see there are plenty of cyclists coming in yet to go out onto the run. But Molina split there under two hours. 1.59.32. There's our champion, Rob Burrell from Holland. Hands raised in triumph, and oh my, what he must be feeling at this stage after having just won. And now Erin Baker, who continues to run exceptionally well, and she has that big lead amongst the women. A big lead indeed. It is now around 40 minutes, and she has placed 11th overall. This is the lady who is presently in third place, Jan Wanklin of Australia, had a very good swim, lost some time to Sarah Coop of Great Britain, who's just ahead of her at this point. Scott Tinley in third place. He knows he's captured third. He'll be happy with that because the times are really very good. There was just 36 seconds in it between Burrell and Molina, and here comes Tinley a further seven minutes back with a time around six hours and 12 minutes. I know that Scott will be pleased with that time, but I know how much he wanted to win it. This is one race he has never won, and I know how keen he was this year, and he thought he could. Six hours, 12 minutes, and 54 seconds for Scott Tinley. And now here comes the Frenchman Yves Cordier. Six hours, 14 minutes, and two seconds. And Cordier split for the run, two hours and eight minutes. Uh, six oh, you know, I caught you at the top, just, just the top of the hill. Right when, when I caught you? Going into Rakesh, buddy. No, no, no. Before the descent. Before the descent. Yeah, it took me 10 seconds behind, and I looked back and I saw you. And then, uh, we went to meet uh, you put two minutes down to request round, and then uh, another minute to... I had a magnificent, magnificent season uh, this year. I had 17 victories uh, already this year. But this one uh, is the best one uh, of my whole career since uh, since 1982. I'm really psyched up and happy, and uh, standing here uh, makes me feel great. Don't ask me to run; uh, <laughs> that will be very hard. But um, usually comes the next day uh, where you start, you know, f feeling a, a little headache and uh, very lazy. But I think I've deserved that. <laughs> I think he has too, Rob Burrell, the winner of the men's race, and there's no question that Aaron Baker is going to win the women's portion. No doubt whatsoever, and her time on the run, incredible. It looks like she's going to get a sub two hour, five minute clocking, and if that is true, it'll be the fifth fastest of the finishers so far. A brilliant performance, a stunning athlete, and just amazes the world what she is capable of doing. This is a repeat victory, 1985 she was a winner here, 1986 she actually crossed the line first but was disqualified later on because of getting some unofficial assistance but here she is again coming back and taking all the glory, a brilliant performance, the money, the prestige, 6.2706 for Erin Baker, a new course record. And the amazing thing, Steve, is that puts her in 11th place overall. Absolutely. Nothing short of magnificent. What a performance from this lady from New Zealand. And she doesn't even look tired. She certainly doesn't. 
and you can see there are plenty of cyclists still coming in. They've got to get off their bikes and still go out there and have 20 miles of running ahead of them. She gets the medal for first place in the women's competition. Has time to turn around, smile, and salute the crowd. We salute you, Aaron Baker. Just a tremendous performance. And now the mandatory check after the race from the paramedics. One of the things they're also instituting here in France for the first time is drug testing. Obviously, with the steroid issue that's been going around for a few years in athletics, uh, the sport of triathlon waits, wants to make sure it's a clean sport. Erin Baker of New Zealand, the first woman to cross the line in the Nice International Triathlon. Getting a well-deserved rub down. How much did Rob win by? I think just a minute. Oh, really? Scott was catching him. Was this a day when everything came together at the same time, did you feel? Yeah, it, it, it has been though for over the last two or three weeks, so that everything's been going right, but the only thing that I did extra well today, I swam well, which I haven't been doing so well in the last few races, and so that got me off to a good start. And then I really like hilly bike courses, it really suits me to be on the hills. And I suppose my run was really good as well, which was um, a lot faster than I've ever run here before, so I must be, I must be in form. <laughs> Aaron Baker has won the women's competition, but Sarah Koop, she's not running on the road, Steve. She is actually running on the promenade. She does not look good at all. No, she doesn't, and I think actually she may be a little disoriented. Uh, I saw her earlier there, she was having some trouble at the A station. She slowed right down. I think she's somewhat dehydrated. She went out at a very fast pace. I think she realized she couldn't catch Erin uh, Baker. There was no chance of that, but she certainly wanted to come home in second place ahead of this lady who's making up all sorts of ground. And you see, she pointed out to ask, is, is that Sarah Cooper ahead of me? She was told it was, and you could see Sarah Cooper slow right down. She's walking past that aid station. Now she's thinking of surviving, holding on. That's all that matters to her now. An unfortunate moment for Sarah Coop, who is obviously very, very tired, just more interested in taking on water and cooling off. Wankling has moved from third to second now, so Jan Wankling of Australia looks as if she will take second place behind Aaron Baker. A valiant effort from Sarah Coop as she tries to finish, and you can see that she is really struggling in the latter stages of the run. And there's no doubt about it, the legs have taken a tremendous toll after the hills on the cycling course and this 20-mile run course. But Jan Wanklin, a delighted triathlete, coming into second place. Overall time going to be around 7 hours, 7 minutes. Her running time about 2 hours and 19 minutes, so 15 minutes slower than the time set by Erin Baker for the run portion. So second place goes to Jan Wanklin of Australia, who had a great swim. She suffered a bit in the bike ride, but she certainly put it all together in the run. And now Sarah Coop, you've got to wonder if she can indeed finish. She is really struggling. Look, she can't get up the ramp. She can't be touched. She has got to cross the finish line by herself. Can she do it? She's done it. She has finished a tremendous effort from Sarah Coop. Third place, seven hours, nine minutes, and 17 seconds. And now she's being administered to by the paramedics, and they're giving her oxygen. And it shows the trouble she was in in the last kilometer or so there because Jan Wanklin opened up a two-minute gap on her. But what a great race we've seen today. And there you see the final standings in the men's competition. Rob Burrell, the first European to win the Nice International Triathlon. Aaron Baker of New Zealand, an easy winner in the women's portion. Then it was Jan Wankling, followed by Sarah Coop. But winning isn't what this race is all about, Steve King. No, it isn't. It's challenging yourself. And that man certainly had a challenge this day. That's Herb Nikkei from France. Last year, he placed third in this event. This year, he just about got in the top 100. That says a lot about the ups and downs of this sport. Sometimes you're on, sometimes you're not. What a great way to cool off after the race. And, of course, you could always sit by one of the kilometer markers and uh, maybe hope for a lift home with somebody in a car. You know, officially, this race ends at half past five in the evening. And that's eight and a half hours after it all began. In theory, anyone still out on the course is disqualified. But while Nice reverts to its normal way of life and the nighttime draws in, they continue to register the late finishers. And finishing is all important in the Nice International Triathlon. 
and nearly four and a half hours after Rob Burrell finishes, in comes the final finisher for the Nice International Triathlon. Michel Dac of France, four hours after Aaron Baker. And the Dutch, no doubt ecstatic about Rob Burrell's win, but they've proven themselves to be the dominant nation with three men in the top ten. From the Nice International Triathlon for Steve King, I'm Steve Armitage. Bonsoir.